We are in a series on trust, trusting God and God trusting us, and this is uh, the third week, and so uh, buckle your seatbelts. Um, we think this is the most uh, difficult area to talk about in trusting God, but really it's the easiest when it comes down to it, and it's the starting point for all of us. Based on Proverbs 3, 1 through 10, God has two questions for us. The top two questions that God asks. Number one is, do I trust God? How many here have any money on them? I'm talking like bills or coins or whatever. And uh, besides all the other words that it says there, the Latin words and all that, what else does it say on our money? At least so far, it hasn't been taken off. In God we trust. I, I believe whoever initiated that, and it was, uh, I think, begun in the uh, early 50s, way before I was born, and... Um, they put, in God we trust, on the money. And I think they had a great idea, because they're trying to remind ourselves that money is not our source. God is our source. So the first question is, do I trust God? The second question is, can God trust me? Can God trust me? So do I trust God, and can God trust me? It's a matter of trust. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faithfulness. Am I trustworthy? As God has given me responsibilities, am I trustworthy? If I'm faithful, if I'm trustworthy in little things, it says, uh, we studied it last week, Jesus said, you'll get more responsibilities. If you're faithful in the littlest things, then you're going to get greater responsibilities. If you're found trustworthy. Now, what's the top question you and I ask? The top question I ask, and you ask, and every person on the planet ultimately asks, who can I trust? Who can I trust? Now, this is Sunday morning, and we gather together around the name of Jesus, so it's a really easy thing to say, we trust Jesus. But now you have to leave in just a little while, and you have another 166 hours before we gather again. And the issue is, what are you going to do now? Who are you going to trust? So, who can I trust? God said, through his servant Solomon, almost 2,700 years ago or so, maybe more, he said, God said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, I like it, the new, today's new international, in all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. That's the memory verse for this year. How many cannot memorize scripture? You can't memorize anything. I mean, how many can't memorize? Hold your hand up. Be proud of it. Okay. Esteban. What's your phone number? Oh, good. Okay. And um, um, let me see. Uh, social security number? Um, anybody know your social security number? How about zip code? Um, how about... Um, you get the idea? We probably can memorize what we really want to memorize. So here's our memory verse. Some of you have been around church way too long. So when you were little, we had memory verses, and then we outgrew the need to have memory verses, but we're back to it again. Here's the memory verse, and it is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust. Some of us are doing previous translations, but it all makes it in the end, you know. So, let's do it one more time. If you need to look at the notes, they're, they're there. Let's do it. This is our memory verse. We may never pass this way again. We may never memorize verses again. So, if you get nothing else, you can walk out going, trust in... Okay, let's do it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in all your ways... Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. You are amazing. Turn the person next to you and say, you're just amazing. Some of you can turn to the person next to you and say, you're amazing. You, you can memorize this verse without saying it out loud, you know. There we go. You know, the uh, key to memorizing scripture is repeat, repeat, repeat. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding 
In all your ways, submit to him. Who's him? God. And he will make your paths straight. To which I say, can I really trust God? Can I trust God with my life? Can, I find that I kind of, I was so encouraged being with Mike and over 500 men this weekend at Colorado Springs and the speaker, Andrew Womack, and man, he just kind of like, uh, as Pastor Jeff Herring says, it was a, a punch in the throat. It was good. It was the idea that uh, he really stuck it to us about trusting God. And we can trust God for every aspect of our life, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter how you got here today, no matter what your past is, no matter what you're facing coming down, that we can trust God. Can, do I really trust God? Do I trust him with my life? Do I trust him with my future? Can I trust him with my hurts? Do I trust him with my possessions? Do I trust him with a... Um, and in this case, I'm trying to make it general, but I'm personal too. Can I trust him with my daughter? Can I trust him with my son? Man, I, I, I'd like to get a hold of the kids sometimes. And, just, and he goes, can you trust me to take care of it? Absolutely not. I, if, if I need your help, I'll tell you, God. Can I trust him for my joy and happiness? Can I trust him? God says trust him with a part of your heart. And uh, acknowledge him some of the times, and he will direct you. Uh, okay, you get it. To which I say, can I trust God? What is the single most important influence, dynamic, in any relationship? What is the most important influence in any relationship, bar none? Every relationship you have, what is the most important thing? Trust. Everybody say trust. 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 To believe in the reliability of, allow someone to look after with confidence. I trust you with my life. I remember as a young, single uh, young man, and my sister came to me. She had two boys, my nephews, and I wasn't that much older. And she told me as I was in my 20s, and she said, I just want you to know if anything happens to me or um, my husband, then you'll get to be in charge of the boys. And uh, you mean you're going to trust me with the boys? You better make sure nothing happens to you. <laughs> trust. To commit to the safekeeping of. They don't trust their money to anybody but outside the family. To trust. To trust. Mother Teresa, I hope all of you know of Mother Teresa. What a great witness for Christ. She said, I know God will not give me anything I cannot handle. I just wish he didn't trust me so much. So we begin today a trust test this week and next week. Be sure and tell people to come back next week. That'll be key, everybody, because it'll be the culmination of this January and our commitment to, to express our trust in God. So here's the trust test. I think you can fill it in. T stands for take a personal examination. Take a personal examination. Now, I admit that I hated to take tests in, in high school or college, but we need to always take a personal examination. Take a personal examination. R says, realize God is my source. Realize God is my source. How you doing? Realize. T, take a personal examination. R, realize that God is my source. How many here believe God is your source? I believe he is, but then I get away from you folks, and then I go, ah, God, are you still my source? There are those moments that I have that feeling, ah, but he is my source. I think back through the years and moments that I've experienced when I go, ah, I don't think I'm going to make it. I can remember one specific moment. It was December of 1992. With this church, I hadn't been here very long, and I'm going, to, I don't know what to do. Are we going to make it through the next month? And sure enough, we're still here 20 years later. Realize God is my source. You is understand God's ways. Understand God's ways. I will call this the laws of the farm. 
because God's kingdom is a natural kingdom. It works out through even natural ways. We can see it through, the, through agriculture, though we don't think agriculture too much these days. But the laws of the farm, you can't violate the laws of the farm. What you sow, you reap. The harvest comes afterwards, not immediately, all those kind of things. Understand God's ways. S stands for surrender. What do you think? Surrender what? That's good. Surrender me. Surrender some of our things, some of our life to God. I, uh, surrender everything to God. Surrender everything to God. T stands for, is for test God's promise. Test God's promise. So, that's the outline. That's what we're going to have for the next, for the rest of this morning and next week. T R U S T. Trust. So, take a personal examination. What is my bottom line? What is the issue for me? Again, it's not hard. This isn't rocket science. Am I trusting God? And trusting God has to begin all over again every day when I get up, just as though maybe it didn't happen before. It can't be, I trusted God back then. No, today's a new adventure. I must trust God. The bottom line for me is, am I trusting God? Am I trusting God? The bottom line means profit, gain, return. God has said, if Jesus, through Jesus, he said, if you'll lose your life for me and for the gospel's sake, you will find life. The bottom line, am I trusting God with my life? Psalm 139, these are great verses that you can pray and think about. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139. See if there's any wicked way in me. Another way to think about wickedness is the idea of idolatry. Do you know what? Uh, because the wickedness is that we put our trust in something other than God. We trust something or someone to provide for us the benefits that only God can provide. You following me? Our wickedness is not, you wicked person. Like, there, I, I want to tell you, there's some wicked people sitting around you. But you're not one, right? <laughs> wicked has to do with this idea that we really are going off and saying, I'm going to put my trust in something else. It's called idolatry. Expecting benefits from people or possessions which only God can give. Now, let me give you three quick observations about this personal exam. Search me, O oh God. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any wicked way. Lead me in the way everlasting. Observation number one, only God knows everything about me. I don't even know everything about me. Only God knows everything about me. So search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. The second observation I have is only God can lead me correctly. How many here have, uh, in all your ways, he will make your paths straight? How many here have taken a few crooked paths in your life because you weren't following Jesus very well, but you were leading the way? Only God can lead me correctly. And the last observation is trust begins with me. Trust begins with me. Do I trust God? If you'll take out the scripture we had earlier, Peter read it, Proverbs 3, 1 through 10. I want you to start with verse 5. You could start with verse 1, but I'm going to jump down to verse 5. Now, I want you to take your pen and pencil, and here's an English. We're studying English again. I want you to circle every personal pronoun as we go through this. Trust begins with me. So, verse 5 through 10. In the New International, you could do it in the other one too, but... I've got in the New International. Verse 5 begins, Trust in the Lord with all, circle the word, your. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust begins with me. And do, do not lean on your own understanding. Circle the word, your. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Circle the word, your. He will make your path straight. Circle the word, your. Who's doing the trusting? We are. Who's getting the benefits? We are. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Circle the word your. I leaned over to Zoe. I said, well, that's me. 
Do you ever get there sometimes? Kind of wise in my own eyes. I'm a legend in my own thinking. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Verse 8, this will bring health to your, circle word, your body, and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Now, how many here don't have any crops? Raise your hand high, you don't have crops. Oh, the rest of you have crops. That's wonderful. I want you to bring them all next Sunday morning. Bring the crops. So I, I was going to give you a way out here, but uh, circle the word your crops. And then verse 10, then your barns, circle the word your, will be filled to overflowing and your vats. How many have any vats? I'm not, not bats, vats. Or you're making wine, you're tromping it out. Circle the word your. Do you know how many times you and your is used through those few verses? Eleven times. Trust begins with me. Me. So take a personal exam. Search me. And R stands for realize God is my source. Realize God is my source. Source is a place or person from which something comes. My source. The source of the river. The source of life. Realize God is my source. Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I uh, put it together in such a way that we could make application straight away. This was for, from Moses to the people of Israel, but it applies to us. Beware that in your plenty you don't forget the Lord your God. When you've become full and prosperous, beware that you don't forget God led you. He gave you water. He fed you so that you would become humble and so that your trust in him would grow and he could do you good. He did it so that you would never feel that it was your own power and might that made you wealthy. How many here are wealthy? Just, uh, no. yeah, see, we're not. because we comp- why, why do we think we're not wealthy? Because we're looking at somebody else who's got more than us. But sitting right here, we are in the wealthiest country in the history of the planet. And we are in the top, no matter what, we're in the top 8% of the whole world as individuals with money, with wealth, with prosperity. It was not your own power and might that made you wealthy. Always remember, circle that, always remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth. Realize God is my source. Colossians 1, it says, Jesus is the creator. In the uh, visible expression of the invisible God, he was the creator. Matthew 5, 36 talks about you can't change your ha- hair color unless, uh, what, what's the famous commercials that we, the ladies and guys too, can change your hair color. Now you can, guys can do it a brush at a time. But you really don't change your hair color. You just put something on it, right? And uh, the Bible says you can't even change your hair color. Make it last. And uh, you can't add a moment to your life. It's all about God. And you don't even know what tomorrow will hold. So don't say, tomorrow we're going to go do this. Say, if God allows, I'm going to do this. You see, God is our source. God is our source. The uh, long-running cartoon strip. How many know of uh, the cartoon's Family Circus? Been around for years. How many know Family Circus? Little Billy the boy is kneeling. Many times uh, it'll be a prayer kind of thing. uh, But uh, Billy is having his night time of prayer And he says, and last but not least, dear Lord, take care of yourself. If you don't, we're all in trouble. (laughs) Realize God is my source. I want to invite some dear friends of mine to come and just share their story a little bit. It's just a short version. You need to talk to them. But uh, amazingly how God has provided for them and God has been their source. Would you give a warm welcome to my friends Wayne and Joanne Benson. Good morning, <laughs> and I won't tell any jokes, so, okay. Uh, we have been part of Green Valley Christian Center for 22 years. This is when and where we both came to know the Lord and began a relationship with him. I'll give you a quick overview of our life before committing to uh, follow Jesus. Basically, we spent the first 40 years of our lives basically well-centered, just in ourselves. <laughs> 
I made a good living, and Joanna also worked part-time. We weren't wealthy by any means, but we did, didn't struggle financially. For a time, we enjoyed having a lot of stuff. After, but after getting somewhere something new, it wasn't long before something else shiny came along that was a real must-have. <laughs> Nothing really satisfied us for very long. We had a Porsche, a BMW, kids in private school, special sports trainers, but still no sense of fulfillment. To add to this selfishness, I, was, I added drinking and even more drinking to my daily routine. Still nothing brought happiness or peace. And I'm Joanne. <laughs> I was a woman overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. But when I realized through the grace of God how deceived I was in so many different areas, I was determined to face any fear that came head on, and I chose to believe the truth of God's word. One of the first areas God led us in was to begin to give a 10% tithe of our gross income to the church. We made up our minds that we would not waver in our commitment and honestly believe that God would take care of us. Great, I love this. We were going to uh, grow in our faith together. Yahoo! Then Wayne uh, became very ill and unable to work. He actually hasn't worked much since then. This was 22 years ago. <laughs> um, I told the Lord, okay, we have enough money to last maybe four months. And then, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. But it was truly a, a time of growth for us trusting the Lord. Um, just trying to figure it out. I thought, like, okay, don't lean on your own understanding, Joanne. Um, but through that period, we realized he was also teaching us how unimportant all this stuff was. He walked us through how to scale back and changed our priorities to his priorities. God began to impress me that we should not be in debt at all. This led us to many discussions on how to, this could be possible without selling our home. We sought counsel from many who were much wiser in this area of finance than us. Many said these days a house is an investment, which was true, but I couldn't shake the feeling that for us, we needed to do, to do this. So we sold our home. We made a considerable amount of money and I felt like God was asking us once again to tithe. And yes, I know this was this. And yes, I we know that this was not everyone. Not everyone does this because they reinvest it. This was a lot of money for us, but when God, when God wants you to do something, we had to do it. I believe God was positioning us for our future, and and how He wanted to use us. Over the next five years, we rented a smaller home, still hoping that someday God would allow us to purchase again, but it wasn't our continual focus. During that time, the Lord impressed us to give to others, to give and to give to this and that and different ministries and, and what have you, um, and sometimes very substantial amounts. We found this to bring us great pleasure. The last time, though, I remember saying to the Lord, okay, if you ask us one more time to give anything, we'll never be able to buy a house. And um, I had an overwhelming sense of his smile saying, really, Joanne, really? Then I thought, whatever, Lord, is fine with me. I don't even need a house. All I need is you. Through some incredible circumstances, God orchestrated the perfect home for us. We purchased it at auction, sight unseen. We found out that there were multiple others that were willing to buy this house, but they could not transfer their funds quickly enough. We turned out to be the only bidder. We were speechless. The best part of this house story isn't that we got a great house for considerably less than it would have sold for, but it was a blessing. The best part was that we, we'd got to experience the living God through this process. We did not know how it would unfold, but our faith in him grew deeper and our hearts were filled with an incredible sense of love, his love for us. 
God has changed our thinking about all of our possessions. Everything we really belong, everything really belongs to Him, not just the 10% tithe. We found that we receive the greatest sense of fulfillment when we can bless others with what He gives us. We found that we can trust Him. Yeah. And I want to say one more thing: <laughs> if you lived your lives with your own understanding, it doesn't work. No. We mess it, it up work. every time. So give it to him. You got it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Recognize God is my source. How many believe that sitting here this morning with other people? And how many know, don't forget in the dark what God's shown you in the light? He is our source. I got an email just about 10 days ago. Can I share it with you? I didn't have any, uh, I didn't prompt it. I didn't ask for it. It just came. One of our own church family members is uh, Robin Schmidt and her two sons, David and Tyler, and they serve in Mexico. They, they work alongside the, uh, with the uh, Door Faith Orphanage and uh, serve in so many ways and Robin's gotten a heart for various people and ministering there They've been there about three years now and uh, Ten days ago Robin sent me this email She said many years ago you were speaking Should I read the first paragraph too? Oh shoot Dear Pastor Dennis, I felt prompted to encourage you to persevere, but don't know what you're facing at this time I have experienced some things recently in ministry that have been very difficult for me to pass through. During this difficult time, I keep thinking that you probably go through similar things much more often than I ever have. I want to share something with you, and I hope you will be encouraged. You've always reminded people that we have influence with others. I want to share a little something with you that is from your influence in my life to get you through those times of wondering if you're making a difference in God's kingdom. Many years ago, you were speaking on giving on a Sunday morning. I don't remember all that you said, but you talked about the times to give an offering. One of the times that you mentioned to give was when you're tempted to trust in your own strength to provide. <laughs> Lorenzo, it's good to hear your laugh, buddy. Let her out. Let her rip. Those times when you're just not sure how the bills will get paid or just afraid about the future, I am so grateful for your teaching this because I've used it on more than one occasion to make just the slightest bit of worry or fear that comes my way to run the other way, losing its grip, grip and being set free to trust God as my provider. A few weeks ago, I received a letter from you. <laughs> you're going to love this. A few weeks ago, I received a letter from you explaining that my financial support was going to drop from its usual amount. My first reaction, Robin says, because uh, we support her on a monthly basis, my first reaction was gladness for it not stopping altogether. <laughs> but afterwards, honestly, I wondered what God was teaching me through it. You see, three years ago, I never raised the full amount needed to be able to cover my estimated cost of living here in Mexico. Yet I have been able to use the monies from the sale of my house and unexpected support coming in when I need it most. But that's not what I wanted to share with you. By lowering my support, I was given the opportunity to teach my son something about God's provision. I told Tyler that you've taught me years ago when you start to worry about finances, that's that it's time to give an offering. The purpose, I explained, was to remind myself of God's faithfulness and to declare to the enemy that I put my trust in God. I didn't even have enough time to give my offering yet when I received my support for the month. It was the largest amount I've ever received since living here. You think God was ahead of the, ahead of the curve? I'm also gratefully baffled how I have been able to give far more away to missions and helping those in need than I have in my entire lifetime. Whether it's meeting my needs or the needs of others through what God provides, I'm learning through experience that I cannot outgive God. Whether it's clothing, food, or money, God's blessings are timely and perfect. I want to encourage you, keep preaching God's word, his truth, his principles for living a life free from the cares of this world. 
I am so grateful for you and Deanna and my Green Valley Church family. My hope is that these, during these difficult economic times that we will all remember that God's economy is never in danger of going bankrupt. His ways are higher and his priorities are better. God bless you and keep you. Robin Schmidt. Recognize God is our source. Turn to the person next to you and you encourage them, remind them, say, God is my source. Tell them. God is my source. God is my source. One of the uh, families in our church, um, they uh, finally lost their home. They've been working on it for a long time to try and keep their home, and they got notice a couple weeks ago that they were losing their home. I've been carrying that note around in my bag for these last two weeks, just thinking about how God takes care of us, and he'll take care of us. You may go through some difficult times, but he will take care of us. Actually, everybody, not real, not not just, but figuratively, look over your shoulder and think how far you've come. (laughs) And how'd you get here? It wasn't on your own resourcefulness. It was on the grace and goodness of God to us. So realize God is my source. Understand God's ways. I'm going to give you five quick ones this morning, and then I'm going to give an invitation. Understand God's ways. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Understand God's ways. Why don't we give more readily? Why are we hesitant to give to God? Well, I just put down three easy responses. First of all, we think, I can't give and take care of myself. That's what goes through our heads. I cannot give and take care of myself. The second one is, I don't know how to give. How to give. I don't know how to give. First one, I think I can't give and take care of myself. Second one is, I don't know how to give. The third one, what do you think the third one is? My life is out of control. The house payment's too great, or the credit cards are maxed, or I'm in debt, I can't make all the ends meet, and it's not all work because you have a hard time. You've never maybe put it together to, in some way, manage, be a good steward of the monies you have. Now, I want to just tell you, there are people sitting around you that they are amazing in their stewardship of the monies they have. There are people sitting around you, though, they have, just like Robin, they, in even recent years, have experienced a decrease in their income, they have continued to give, trust in God to provide. There are more stories like Wayne and Joanne sitting around you like you've never known before. In just a few weeks, though, uh, I want to tell you, we'll start a financial freedom class. It'll be a financial class on how to get control of our money. Now, did you hear what Wayne said? And it didn't mean, that doesn't mean you have to follow perfectly, but wouldn't it be great if you at least were out of debt except for maybe that car payment, you know, $3,000 for the car. Um, uh, No, no, don't go there. Um, But wouldn't it be neat if you were out of debt completely? Well, many of you are, right? Uh, Wouldn't that be great if everybody was out of debt? What pressure that uh, takes off of us? But uh, in just a few weeks, you should consider being a part of the class so you can learn how to manage your finances. So here's a few laws of the farm. Here's understanding God's ways. Number one, number one is the who's in charge principle. Now, we emphasized that last week and the week before, but it goes like this. God is the owner, and I am the manager. God is the owner, and I am the manager. In the Psalms, it says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all its people, belong to him. It's the who's in charge. God is the owner, and I am the manager. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. God is the owner, and I am the manager. Let's say that out loud together, would you? If you want to kind of cement it in you, remind yourself, oh, man, I'm all panicked. I'm worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about what's going to happen in the future. I'm worried about this. God is the owner, and I am the manager. Let's say it again. God is the owner, and I am the manager. And I have found in my own life that I quickly forget that when things are going so well. I forget, oh, God is the owner, 
I just start putting it on cruise control. God is the owner. I am the manager. Sometimes I got to come full circle and be reminded. Number two, number two is the give and grow principle. The give and grow principle. Practicing stewardship, being good managers, produces growth. Don't be misled. No one can fool God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. Eternal life. The give and grow. Some of the ways we grow is we become more like God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Giving, when I give, I grow because I become closer to God. And uh, give and grow, I, giving is the antidote for getting. Now, my favorite place to shop is Costco. It's amazing. They have so many things there that until I saw it, I didn't know I needed it. And then when I saw it, I go, wow, man, I need one of those. And look, it's such a great price. Quality product, great price. Deanna, can we get this? I just walked through the store going, wow, I like one of those and one of those. I didn't know I needed so much until I saw it. Giving breaks the grip of getting when I give. Another benefit when I give, how I grow, is it, it strengthens my faith. Giving is also an investment. How do I grow? It's an investment for my future, for eternity. And, and giving, another growing thing, is it blesses me in return. I don't know if you caught it in Wayne and Joanne, but the incredible joy they've experienced in seeing God as their source and giving. Giving blesses me in return, and another benefit, how I grow, is giving makes me happy. It's more happy to give than to get. Practicing stewardship is more than giving money. It is God's way of growing believers. The give and grow principle. Number three, we're doing really good. The do it now principle. Putting to use my present resources. We talked about that last week. But uh, the do it now principle. Putting to use my present resources. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. In this way, your generosity stores up a reward for you in heaven. Unless you're faithful in small matters, you won't be faithful in large ones. Do it now. Number four, the I'm in debt principle. From the moment I was born, I was in debt. Because when my mom gave birth to me, she'd already been putting up with me for nine months. And then she put up with me for a bunch more years, and then she put up with me for a bunch more years after that, just from a distance. The I'm in debt. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. Paul said, I'm a debtor to all, so as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you. Now, here's the myth, and uh, it's a political thing today, and you've got to hang on to it, because the myth is this. The world owes me. Ever heard that? Ever thought that? The world owes me. Well, actually, the government owes me, but it may not be there when I get there. I've been paying in. They tell me it probably won't be there when I get there. I'll be ticked. You can't go bankrupt until I get my share. (laughs) The world owes me. That's a myth. The truth is, I owe God everything. I owe God everything. My indebtedness, I'm in debt. The moment I was born, I'm in debt. My indebtedness is to God first. Without him, I'm nothing. How many here are enjoying breathing at this moment? The air you got. I mean, it may be a little smogged up. I mean, you got all the carbon stuff, but you enjoy breathing. You got got that all right? Where did you get that? God made that possible. I go with God everything. My indebtedness is to God. My indebtedness is to those who came before me. You know, uh, we have much to be grateful for. I just say it in the terms of being a local church because of those who went before us. I can think of their names. I picture them in my mind right now. Not all of them, but I can see them. Some of them. 
and I'm in debt to them because I got to go forward based on what they did. And the third way that I'm in debt is I'm in debt to the next generation, that I would move forward to serve and to help those that are coming behind me. I owe God everything. Number five, last one, is the fountain of youth principle. How many here would like to live forever? How many would like to start today? I live forever through what I give. I live forever through what I give. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where they will never lose their value. Bless you. We exist temporarily through what we get. We live forever through what we give. The fountain of youth principle. I live forever through what I give. Whether I give my life, my time, my energies, my money, I give. Can God trust you? But I want to wrap it up this morning with, do you trust God? Do you trust God? Do you trust God? Deanna, if you want to come, if you're willing to come to the piano, let me just do this real quick. Not so quick. In 1 Peter chapter 1, this is the starting point. If we're going to trust God, this is the starting point for us trusting God. Some of you wandered in here in the last few weeks and you go, what is this all about? It's not kind of like what I'm used to. I've met some of you. You kind of go, wow, it's not a lot different. I like it. Different. This is what it's all about. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Verse 6, it says, So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you've had to endure many trials for a little while. Any of you had any trials lately? These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love Jesus even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. Now, some of you have been around church long enough, that phrase would be, what would that phrase be? Uh, I'm trying to remember the King James mic. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Some of you know that old hymn, because you and I are getting old. We've been doing this a long time. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, glorious inexpressible joy. Verse 9, the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The reward for trusting him will be your salvation. So I want to invite you to stand with me this morning. I thank you so much for being here, for gathering together. Hope your faith's been encouraged. But if you would pause just for a moment, there are people in the room that have never started trusting God. They haven't put their trust in God through Jesus. I just read about it. And your place, as far as you know how, is to say, I trust God for, with my life. I trust him. I don't know what all that means, but I will trust him. Though I haven't seen him, I will trust him. I will trust him. So, I want 
to ask if you're here today, for those of you that are here today, it may be the most courageous thing you've ever done, but you need to trust him for the salvation of your soul. You need to put your confidence in God. Do I trust God? And you've never had that moment. You've been hanging around, but you've never had that moment of commitment where I said, I'm going to trust God with my life. I'm going to give Jesus my life. I will give him. I'll trust him for my future. I'll trust him for my life. I'll trust him for my relationship with God and my eternal destiny. And so I want you to just step out, come down to the front. Maybe we can sing a song just briefly, give us a little cover. But if you need to, you've never done it before. Do you trust God to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your leader, as your Lord, as your Savior? You will trust him. He's the only one that we can ultimately have security in, trusting Jesus. How many here need to trust God more with everything? Yeah, some of you, it's remarkable the difficulties, what seems to be immovable obstacles. God is with you. He hasn't forgotten you. You can trust him. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that you have revealed how much we can trust you because you gave your Son so that we could have salvation, that we could be forgiven, that we could have a purpose in life, so that we could have a relationship with you as what you've called us to. I thank you for those who stepped out this morning and may in this moment of commitment that they recognize the Spirit of the living God is working and growing in them, that you are with them, that they can trust you with all of their heart. And may we as a church through this year come to trust you more, strengthened in our faith, recognizing how good you are and giving thanks every step of the way. We praise you and thank you for this morning together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining with us today in our live streaming of our service and our message, we're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God. Have a great day.